So at this point, I'm not sure how many of you still haven't seen Don't Look Up, but if you haven't watched it yet, you have to watch it. It is required viewing. If you are a viewer of The Humanist Report, if you're a leftist, hell, if you're just dissatisfied with government and the way that it's just incapable of meeting even the most minimum requirements for human survival. So Don't Look Up is a movie that was co-produced by David Sirota, the former speechwriter of Bernie Sanders, and it's essentially just about a giant asteroid that's supposed to hit the planet, and there's a couple of scientists all throughout the movie begging and pleading with government, with media, with people in general to try to take it seriously, and that's that's the movie. It's, it's meant to be a satirical portrayal of the way that we're refusing to address climate change in any meaningful way or even care about climate change. So David Sirota was talking to MSNBC about the movie and they're reacting specifically to a scene where Jennifer Lawrence's character is begging and pleading with members of the media to take the asteroid seriously, but they don't take it seriously. So obviously this is meant to be you know, indicative of the way that the mainstream media covers climate change. And the MSNBC anchor actually acknowledged that this was a critique of them and asked David Sirota about this. So we'll we'll play the clip, but this is what David Sirota said about this. On MSNBC just now, I talked about how corporate media takes big money from fossil fuel advertisers and then refuses to seriously cover the climate crisis. I'm shocked they didn't cut my mic. Thanks a ton to Amy and MSNBC for this serious discussion. Huge. Huge indeed. So we'll watch the clip and then uh, we'll discuss it when we come back. Listen, it's obviously that there's an indictment and fair criticism. What I thought was so genius was the indictment of even the media and the way that we cover climate change. Um, so there's definitely a little dig at the news coverage here on this issue. And I wanted to ask you, how does the movie not become um, a parody of itself here for a moment? Because there's been a bit of a backlash saying basically that the film doesn't come up with answers in this particular scenario or even any suggestions. Uh, how, what, what do you say to that? Well, what I say is that first and foremost, the movie is a movie. Uh, so it's, right. it's one set of stories. Uh, secondly, it's designed to try to raise awareness of the problem that we have in communicating well, with ourselves uh, as a society about scientific facts. And I think the movie does accurately raise questions about whether the media right now, as it's constructed, is willing to take a, a crisis like climate seriously and bake it into the day to day coverage. Uh, you know, the climate, we, we cover the Economy, the media covers the economy every day uh, as part of its coverage. It covers all sorts of things. Uh, the political wranglings on Capitol Hill is day-to-day -day coverage. It does not cover the climate crisis as part of its coverage on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's for a lot of reasons. I think one, it's a terrifying topic, but it, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be. It shouldn't be covered. Two, there's a lot of uh, media outlets that get a ton of money from the fossil fuel industry that puts advertisements on in into the media, and people know in 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 the media in, in a lot of corporate media know. Where where, where where that money comes from when they're working for those outlets. So I think the bottom line here is, is that climate change needs to be part of the day to day. When the president has a press mm. conference, uh, that should be part of the question. It shouldn't just be the economy or what's going on in Congress. It should be what are you doing to stave off this crisis that threatens the livable ecosystem of our planet? Okay. First and foremost, um, I too am definitely surprised that they didn't cut David Sirota's mic because every once in a while, one of these voices will break through and MSNBC or CNN or even Fox News' audience will be alerted to the fact that this is not a news organization. It's a business, first and foremost. The goal is not to deliver the news. The goal is to make money. So when you have these fossil fuel advertisers, of course, you want to attract those advertising dollars. So covering things that they don't want might kind of scare away the advertisers. And it's not just, you know, an issue when it comes to climate change and fossil fuels. The reason why the mainstream media is antagonistic towards issues like single payer or even a public option is because they take money from private health insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies. Defense spending is another issue. We saw the way that the media in unison condemned Joe Biden. It's because all of them, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, they all are taking money from defense contractors, Boeing. So this is an issue, a serious issue. And for David Sirota to actually educate MSNBC's viewers here, that's really important. And furthermore, for the MSNBC host to be self-aware enough to actually acknowledge that that scene was a critique specifically of corporate media, that's actually rare. Uh, but I do have to say that the MSNBC host talked about supposed backlash that Don't Look Up is receiving, which I haven't heard this critique. But the critique is that, uh, as he said there, you know, th there's no solution. It's all just criticism, but no solution that 
what? That doesn't make sense. It's a film about how we're not taking climate change seriously. The film doesn't have to propose solutions. The film is just saying, hey, dipshits, wake up. The planet is becoming uninhabitable and you're sitting on your asses doing nothing. This is an emergency and we're prioritizing corporate profits over the literal survival of the human species. And that's kind of ridiculous. Maybe we should do something. Now, David sort of makes the valid point that the reason why, you know, the media doesn't cover this is one, because, um, you know, it's a terrifying topic. And I think that the implication with him saying that is that it's a ratings killer. Now, Chris Hayes on, on MSNBC has admitted that climate change is a ratings killer. And look, I know that that's true. Anytime myself or other leftist hosts talk about climate change, nobody watches it. And, uh, you know, that is an issue, but that doesn't mean that you just don't talk about climate change. I mean, I'm one person, so I try to talk about climate change as much as I possibly can. But I do admit that it is a ratings killer, but I don't make calculations on what I should and shouldn't cover based on whether or not I think people are going to tune in. I make calculations on what I cover personally because I want these important stories to get out there. But these corporate media outlets, these are large multi-billion dollar companies and they're companies. Like th that's the emphasis. They are companies. They are businesses first and foremost. So they do choose what to cover based on one, ratings, and two, possibly more importantly, advertisers. Because what makes them money is going to drive their behavior. And that's not to say that these mainstream news outlets are not able to talk about climate change or they never talk about climate change but it's heavily disincentivized, right? They have a disincentive to not talk about issues that will offend potential corporate advertisers. So, you know, every once in a while, you'll see a really great story on climate change from Chris Hayes, for example, on MSNBC. Um, and CNN will do some pretty good stories from time to time, but overall, it's not part of their day-to-day -day coverage as it should be, as the economy is, because that's not what people care about. But this is important because the media actually has a lot of powers as an institution. They have the ability to single-handedly elevate the salience of political issues in America. So if people don't find climate change an issue that they care about very much, the media can make it seem more important. And it is important, but they can raise the salience of these issues. We see this all the time from Fox News. They, they can take issues that are so obscure that nobody's heard about, like critical race theory, and make it a national news story, and everyone all of a sudden is concerned. There's nothing stopping CNN or MSNBC from doing the same thing with climate change, and they should because this is really important. We have a year, le less than a year, to act before the Democratic Party loses the House. So we have a limited window of time to maybe do anything about climate change, and that's not happening. So, you know, this is really, it's important for David Sirota to say this because I don't think that MSNBC's audience is savvy enough to know all of these conflicts of interest that prevent their preferred news outlet from covering news that are important or covering it in an unbiased way. And, you know, these outlets, even if MSNBC, if you watch it and you find it ridiculous, normie Democrats worship MSNBC. Fox News uh, is, it's basically borderline parody, but yet conservative boomers love Fox News. So even if young people in our generation, Gen Zs, millennials, even Gen Xers, are savvy enough to know that the mainstream media is a joke, still older generations rely on mainstream media because they trust these hosts. So we have to completely, uh, or, or not completely, consistently drill it into their fucking skulls about how corrupt these corporate media outlets are because they're businesses, not news organizations. So the reason why they're framing things in a certain way, the reason why they're choosing to cover some top is, topics and not others is because they care about money and money only. So yeah, this was a great uh, segment from... David Sirota, kudos to him for calling out the mainstream media to their face, which is something you really don't see very often because people like this, like David Sirota, aren't usually invited on mainstream media very frequently. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. <laughs> So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.